Welcome to Launch Code, a premier business podcast, starring Evan Hafer, Matt Best, and Jared Taylor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Launch Code. I am your uh, host for the moment, Baker Levitt, and my guest today is Logan Stark. We're here in San Antonio, Texas, in the uh, podcast room, and uh, JT and Matt and Evan are gone, and I just decided that I would steal all the equipment and do some interviews with some people that work at Black Rifle Coffee uh, that I find interesting, and you know, I, what I'd like to talk about is things uh, that to these guys are very, very common in their day-to-day lives, but to people like me and other people listening you know, trying to learn a little bit how some of this magic happens at Black Rifle. So we have Logan Stark, uh, who is a former Marine, or is a Marine scout sniper. Yeah, don't forget the scout. Right. Yeah, we had a, he got, he got lost I didn't on the way lost. back. I was trying to avoid traffic. Right, and you took us to a cul-de-sac. Well, yeah, I didn't know it was there. So, Logan, what is your job title at Black Rifle? Right now, it is the director of content. Okay, and that's basically what we're going to try to touch on today. Yeah, it's if it's I, been a kind of constantly shifting thing, but um, I don't really worry too much about specific titles. It's right, but just for the sake of conversation. <sighs> director of content. Okay, so how long have you been with Black Rifle? Three years. And Three we, years now. It was right after, so I met everybody, met Evan, Jared, JT, Marty, uh, the weekend that the first Black Rifle video dropped on Facebook, which I hope a lot of our listeners remember, which was the hipster waterboarding commercial, which and was kind of what put Black Rifle on the map originally. And is that video accessible anywhere now? Or is yeah, if, if you if you search it, like we, uh, you know, with the way that social media has kind of shifted and evolved over the years, um, we took it down off of our own. Um, but you can still find it it's still floating around. In right. Because the, the way that, like the YouTube the algorithm and stuff works and the way they like censor stuff or. Yeah. Especially with what happened recently with YouTube. Um, it's just it's we got one strike for a video that had been up for a couple years uh, that we did with Silencer HQ. And it was it was a bunch of guys shooting fully auto glocks at a barrel that said fuck hipster coffee um and we got a strike for that so we kind of were like oh okay are they are they doing a clean sweep we didn't want to have you know especially with Alex Jones just happening we we don't ever want that to happen to us because these social media platforms are such a valuable asset for us that we'll play ball it's not going to change who we are, but we kind of have to play ball, and, and that's just the way it goes. Yeah, but. I think Evan made a, con, uh, a comment the other night uh, uh, on Drinking Bros podcast the other day talking about the Alex Jones situation. And it's like, you know, they're private companies. It's their rules. We don't have to agree with it, but we do have to play within their rules. Yeah, know? we do. We do. And we have to. I mean, if you're in the social media sphere of work, you are used to that already anyway. You know. Oh, yeah. As good as anybody else. If and I think we were kind of touched on this last night when we were kind of talking through this is the number one most important thing if you're involved in social media is have the willingness to adapt right. every day. Right. So, I mean, the, 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 so my company, Digital Mongoose, I run social media for several outdoor companies, firearms companies, Kimber Firearms being uh, my primary uh, account, uh, Mossberg, several other brands out there. And, um, you know, it's interesting how there's you know with with a firearms company or things like that that you have to, like I can't promote posts I can't boost posts because of the terms right right there's there's also these little n- niches within social media that you have to play differently also right. you know hunting is the same way right and you know there's people that are like oh that's such bullshit man like I can't run ads and da 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 it's like well okay I can't run ads however what I can do is I can focus on ways to work around it. Like, how can I deliver a better product? How can I deliver better content? And we talked about last night, feeding the beast. So Right. And uh, it, if you look specifically at two examples um, that Black Rifle has just posted to social media, uh, most recently, uh, the crispy 
Omar Avila uh, is who we are episode and then also Instructor Earl. Both of those things have firearms featured in them very predominantly. Uh, the intro with Crispy is pretty much all firearms. Now, we were able to boost that. So it's not like if there is a firearm in a video, you cannot boost that. That's not the status quo for everything. Um, but if if you're promoting, a, a, it's very easy for them to look at something and they're like, oh, well, I don't like this because it does this. That's what we're trying to avoid because ultimately it comes down to some random stranger sitting in front of a desk who kind of has a lot of power. Right, and you don't know what type of mood they're in. Right. So let's talk about... Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's talk about primary social media platforms. So, when you started with Black Rifle, you know, and I started my company, I would say the primary was Facebook. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. And that's, that's where I got my start, really. Right. YouTube so, and Facebook. Yeah. So you could, if you walked around and took a poll of a thousand people and asked them, "Do you have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, whatever, whatever?" I, I, everyone's got a Facebook. Everyone does. I feel like there's this been this big shift away from personal usage of Facebook because it got a little bit too convoluted there for a little while. Right. And then uh, Instagram is, if I had to surmise it in a very simple way, I would just say it's the fun platform. Right. I, I think people go to Instagram more than they do a lot of these other platforms because it's it's simple. It's easy to digest. You, if you don't have to, if you don't want to digest certain parts of things, you don't have to, you know what I mean? Like you don't have to read or you don't have to scroll through a person's whole comments if, because of the way that they integrated. I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago when you were going through your feed, they didn't have like that little see more. And so if someone wrote a novel underneath their Instagram post, you saw all that and you had to scroll th past that. And right. that's one of those kind of things these yeah. based off user interaction, they constantly change, especially now Instagram's algorithm is so interesting because they are really based off how much you use the app. They are really serving you up content that they think you will like. So if you're only on Instagram for an hour they are being super, super selective about the content that they feed up to you as opposed to it being a chronological format. Now, think about that for a second. Like if you go on Instagram and all you're primarily doing is looking at girls' asses, like that's what you're going to be fed. But if you're if you're on it more of a, a longer period of time and you are experiencing a, a more diverse interaction with people, you're going to get more of that in the long run. Yeah, so a way to put that into perspective is if you look at, like, let's say Instagram highlights. So there are certain Instagram accounts where you spend more time on their highlights than other Instagram accounts. Well, I mean, that and whole if thing you will notice, is just if you'll such notice, a talking point. If you'll notice, the Instagram accounts that you spend the most time on are the first ones in your highlight feed. For stories? Yeah. Instagram, yeah. Instagram stories. I'm sorry. Yeah, I meant Instagram stories, not highlights. Yeah, I mean, for sure. So, like, every time I open up my personal Instagram account, Black Rifle, if the story has been updated is the first thing to pop right. obviously because I'm spending so much time uh, interacting with that page. Um, and, and that's the thing, but, so there's movement behind that, right? So like once you refresh that app and you pull it up again, it shuffles. So it's attention grabbing right off the bat before you even get to that first post. You're seeing what's new, what's happening, and there's uh, like it's eye grabbing right away. That circle that's moving to the something front. news up. Some yeah, and, and that's uh, that hits a lot of um, stimuli as far as our brain goes. Because like oh like you know that's kind of why we open stuff up is because we want to see what's going on and what's what what this is the newest thing that's happening. Right. So let's talk let's kind of quickly define the platforms and I'll give you my take on the three primary platforms and then you kind of tell me what you think sure. about it. So Facebook that's the most popular in the world. Uh what is it at now uh, a billion users? Yeah. That's a that's it's a over stat. a billion I think. Um but that's the place where conversation takes place. So if you look at the way Facebook works, and uh, that is where I would describe it as long form, long form con conversation and interaction occurs. Second quarter of 2018, Facebook had 2.2 .2 billion monthly active users. That's a lot of people. That is a that is a shitload of people, man. Yeah, that is. Uh, that's a quarter of the world. That's a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So, in my opinion, Facebook is a place, a, a, pl a platform where conversations take place, and short, intermediate, and long form conversations take place. 
All right, Instagram, like you said, that's where photos are. It is visual stimulation. There's not a lot of really large, long, you know, mid to long range, in depth conversations taking place on Instagram. You're being fed stimuli. Correct. All right, Twitter, which I really feel sometimes I'm the only person that understands it. I don't know. There has definitely been a Twitter resurgence, it especially is with Trump coming into office. Um, and like, I don't know, like there's, you know, there's an inter- entertaining factor to it now with like, OK, the, you know, the man that's leading the free world is, uh, you know, he's that's just his chosen platform he's just to just fire off tweets at the rapid and like, OK, like I kind of want to just go and check that and see what's going on right. now. Ex- another thing I love about Twitter is uh the interactions between comedians. It's a it's a very uh, heavy usage platform amongst comedians, and uh, it's kind of a platform in which I go to to get a laugh every, every once in a while. As opposed to it's Instagram is not that like you know the comedians post video clips to Instagram, sure, but like it's the opportunity to where you can really tell if somebody's quick. And, right and quip is like yeah. if they can fire off. Yeah, just Twitter don't read comments on Twitter if it's anything you're looking at political. But no, that's the you know Twitter is the president of the United States' primary platform to just to, to distribute what's on his mind, unfiltered. You know exactly what's coming. Uh, it's also a place where media lives, news media, athletes, celebrities. Uh, it's a it's designed as a micro blogging platform, and it is the there's the largest migration from. I think the 55 plus age demographic is migrating rapidly to Twitter. Yes. And I will say, um, while it is not the most important factor in Twitter, um, I, th- I don't think you can have a conversation about Twitter without bringing, um, the porn industry into it. Absolutely. Because, you know, they, they're very, um, uncensoring and, and they allow people to do pretty like much. They're the whatever. only one that allowed Alex Jones. To stay. Yeah. So, I, so I think, um, you know, they're drawing also people to that app um, that aren't getting that type of content um, on the other platforms. And it's like, you know, it's 100% happening a lot to where people are going to that platform to interact with that type of content. Right. And then it's spreading out from there, you know, where if, if people are looking at Twitter more often, they're spreading out throughout the app. So I it's an interesting to, move on their part. I go to Twitter per, for, my, for my personal, I go to Twitter for news and current events like because you're, you're not getting news and current events on instagram you're just not you know right um but i do like twitter for that purpose uh it's also it, you know i think what is it it was 17 and a half percent of all people that have social media accounts are on twitter so like I, I think you know from a business perspective you have to hit all platforms because if you the mo- if you neglect twitter or you know you hear a lot of people saying oh man screw facebook i'm done with this shit so if you neglect any particular platform, you're missing a, a, a segment of society. And it's very important to hit everything. I, I do. I totally agree with that. I think like we've really clustered these uh, into like the big three. If we put Instagram kind of under the Facebook umbrella, but YouTube, Twitter and Facebook slash Instagram, like those are the big three. And, right. and there's not really any yeah, competition. You know, it's like We'll talk about Pinterest and, you know, we, we had a conversation about LinkedIn last night, but those are... With as many people as are involved in these things, it's it's really interesting that everybody kind of lives within these three platforms. Right, and then you know you have your what I would describe as outlier platforms, just because I don't know I don't know anything about them. I don't know that much about them yet. Your knowledge of YouTube is far far superior of mine. Like I don't know that I've ever posted a video to YouTube or Vimeo or whatever. Uh, and then you have Pinterest and LinkedIn and whatnot. What's what's your take? Well, let me say this before we get into that. People digest their content where they digest their content. Like it's very rare that you can reroute someone. So like when people that have Instagram accounts and I'm on Twitter and I see that they've linked Instagram to Twitter. To me, that's just, that's a sign of laziness. I would never, ever click on an Instagram link from Twitter. Yeah. If, if businesses aren't making and providing content towards specific platforms anymore, you're wrong. Yeah. You have to do that. Right. And they're all different. The end user on each platform is completely different. Absolutely. And you have to cater and you have to understand that and you have to cater to them. Like, it's like I said, they, people are going to digest their content where they digest their content. Twitter people are Twitter people, Instagram people, are Instagram people, Facebook people are Facebook people. Now let's talk about YouTube. I love YouTube. Okay. So tell me why. 
Um, because it, to me, it's like going to the library. Like if I want information, if I want to learn something, uh, if I want to dig super heavy, uh, and go down the rabbit hole on something, I'm going to YouTube. And that's the way that we've built black rifles. YouTube is man, we'll entertain you and you, and you can go back and you can see some old videos, but like we will inform you, we, we will give you a whole bunch of really awesome coffee knowledge. Like the way that uh, we've our, our sort of ethos behind this is like if you have a question, I want to have an answer already available to you on my library. And that's why I think YouTube is so amazing and that you can 100% say they've owned the long format. Hold on, what is what is long format? Um, I would say well, on, what do you say what, what you mean by that is long format content? Yeah, so just talking strictly as a is a time as the variable is stuff that content that's, um, what, I don't know, six minutes plus right now there's kind of sweet spots, uh, for content in the, in the, like, uh, you know, I'll cite an example here in a second, but, uh, that sort of eight to 12 minute time frame is kind of your sweet spot on YouTube right now. And, uh, they, you know, this is, they've got to find a way to separate themselves from these other platforms. You know, Instagram, this quick digestible Facebook's kind of like a middle ground. YouTube's is like, you know, we want to keep people here for a while. Mm -hmm. And I think they're doing a great job at it. Right. And also like, for people listening, like keep this in mind, these companies hate each other. Okay. Because they're competing for eyeballs and, so, like I mentioned, you know, I see, you know, when you link an Instagram post to your Twitter, someone on Twitter and the way Twitter looks at that is like they, there's an Instagram link. You're telling the person on Twitter, leave Twitter and go to Instagram. So Twitter is like, oh, these sons of bitches are trying to steal our customers. Because when someone leaves, the eyeballs leave the platform, the cash register shuts off. So... And I think, and I might be reading into this, but you know, when you talk about long format with YouTube, I think the reasoning behind that is the longer the video, the longer the engagement, the longer that individual is on YouTube. Yeah, and they and not going somewhere else. Yeah, and they sh shifted their uh, their analytics towards uh, v like views. As far as YouTube goes, views isn't the most important thing anymore. It's it's minutes watched. So that's why. Uh, along with the shift, um, not really shift, but just more of a cementation towards this long form content is that's what YouTube wants companies to look at that statistic as far as minutes watch. And, and like, we're making that move and, you know, we've been prepping for this for a little while, but that vlog style content, um, the behind the scene type stuff, um, you're going to see a lot more f of that type of content from us in the future. And, um, you know, and it also fits well into exactly what we're doing right now as far as the podcast stuff goes. Um, all of these, uh, you know, it's a really good opportunity. So if you're recording for an hour, two hours, you know, Rogan's up to three, maybe plus at some I don't know that I could talk for three hours. Well, like, I think that, like, how rare is it that you sit down with someone and you have a three-hour conversation with them? Like, dead it, sober? Doesn't happen. It doesn't happen, right? Now, so, but, but if you do have a three hour conversation. It's a good conversation. Like right. you, you are happy to engage in that, like sacrificing that three hours of your day because you're, you're having fun. You're, you're getting good information out of you. You like telling certain stories. You like getting information from that person. And, but that's not really, you're not going to necessarily watch a lot of people don't watch three hour long videos on YouTube, but having the opportunity to take seven to 12 minute clips from your, you know, sections of your podcast that are sort of highlights, put those together. Like Rogan's got thousands of right at this point. You know, it's, it's funny. Cause like I'd say, I don't know anything about YouTube, but you, you mentioned the like instructional component to YouTube and unbeknownst to me, I actually do spend a lot of time on YouTube because I Google stuff like how to do things or how things work because I'm big into figuring things out on my, on my own. You know, like if Evan's like, hey, man, can you look into this or, you know, whatever, it's like, all right, well, I'm certainly not going to ask him how it works. So, but like I, I, now the more I think about it, I do spend a good bit of time yeah, on Yeah, well, I mean, just think about it. So, right, so. But I don't ever go to like, I'm going to go to YouTube to look at stuff. It's I'm always directed to YouTube through Google. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't 
100% quote me on this, but I believe it is the second most used search engine on the internet now. YouTube? Yeah. I would, I would believe I, that. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think... Uh, Dave just gave you... The, Dave has his bottom lip is stuck out. Yeah. He gave yeah, the, is, chin, the, chin, okay. the chin shimmy. The, you know. Yeah, so... Um, but so so you want to learn something, right? Or you're like, uh, man, I just got some some Axis meat, and I and I want to learn how to cook Which it. Which is what we had for dinner last night, and it was so delicious. Uh, everything. So I, I, for those listening that don't know me, I, I'm an avid hunter. In 2017, I hunted in 11 states and two countries. I'm not like some super badass hunter like John Dudley. I'm avid. It's it's a hobby. I've really enjoyed. It. I spend a lot of time doing it. I know how to cook a lot of wild game. I have freezers full of it. And I watched Logan in his brand new house in his little little cast iron skillet. Everything you did from the time you pulled that meat out of the freezer until the time you put it on a plate, I disagreed with. Well, that's not how you do that. That's not how you thaw it out. That's not how you cook it. That's not how you season it. I didn't tell you, but in my head, I'm like, oh, Jesus Yeah, Christ. I could feel you being skeptical. Oh, I was judging. I was judging you. Absolutely. I had on a white wig. I was passing judgment. <laughs> uh, and um, I can say this straight faced that is one of the best wild game meats i've ever eaten in my life i axis deer yeah and, I and it is without a doubt the most beautiful meat and it's probably weird for those of you to hear someone say that meat is beautiful but it's just the coloring everything about it, that was out of this world so anyway back to how yeah. you learn how to cook it well that's one thing that i've really um become passionate about in the recent past is just um meat and game meat in particular like i it's extremely interesting to me. I want to know so much more about it, but say I did want to learn something in regards to that, you know, so you've got kind of your options as far as reading and consuming video content, um, just from a stimulus endpoint or stimulus point, uh, I can watch, listen, engage with, as opposed to reading something that feels like more along the lines of work. You're not being visually stimulated. Um, and I think every most people would lean towards it's like reading directions versus watching a video. You know what I mean? Like you're going to shift towards that engaging video content as opposed to wanting to read an article no. most of the time, I think. And there's something for everyone. Like I don't by any stretch of the imagination think that I'm a, a master of Twitter or anything. Like I, I don't. Um, I think I've put a lot of time into Twitter. So you know, that's one of the things that I do with Black Rifle is I do help with the Twitter. And, you know, like I look at you and Matt and JT and everything, and it's like, okay, these guys have Instagram on lockdown and Facebook on lockdown. The videos absolutely kill it. And so I was thinking, I was like, you know, where, how can I bring value to the team? And so what I, I you know, try to find opportunity that's maybe not getting as much attention as I think it probably should. So that being said, you know, started with Black Rifle Twitter. I think it was January of 2017. And, um, you know, I don't know if I'm at liberty to see how many impressions we did. But between Black Rifle. No, I don't, I don't care. I think it's important to throw numbers out there because, um, you know, ultimately a huge part of this company is data driven. Right. And, and knowing what those numbers are, like, that's how we justify the means, you know. Right. Or, or so, the like, I mean, the, and the point in that is so, like, I'll say my top three. Uh, I'll, I'll say top four accounts that I that I manage social. Kimber being one of them. Black Rifle, you know, Black Rifle Twitter. I don't touch any of the other social platforms. I help with the Twitter. Um, Thirteen million impressions. Okay, that's a lot. Thirteen million impressions. Yeah, across uh, three accounts combined. If you if you combined, you're talking about Baker Levitt's little reach here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, with the with the brands that I work with on Twitter. So that being said, like. I needed to learn how to do something on Twitter. There was a there was a component of running longer form video on Twitter, and I thought I should really know how to do this. Well, I'm, uh, let me finish. So I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing other companies uh, do it, and it's funny you mentioned porn because you see tons of long porn videos on Twitter, and um, you might see those if you look for them. But uh, I so I, I looked up how to upload longer videos. And it was a guy that did a step-by-step -step process of literally showing the icon on the screen on YouTube. And I was like, holy cow. 
it was so simple and so much faster to learn it that way as opposed to reading, click on this, then click on this, then click on this, whatnot. So it's like the instructional tutorial component that you're talking about. Like there's some things my reading comprehension is off the charts. There's other things my reading comprehension is like subhuman, you know. So it's a healthy, alter it's, it's a healthy balance between reading and visual. There's some things you can learn easier visually and there's some things you can learn more effectively by reading them. And that's just an example of uh, how it really helped me with something that I really know a lot about, you know. Yeah. And, and something that's extremely interesting to me specifically right now is um, all of as far as impression. And so let me just clarify, because I know the impressions engagement, like if, if you don't live in the social media world, you don't know. You're like you're like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. But if you do, you you have a good grasp on it, but you may not have a hundred percent, but like the way I view it and I always try and break it down to the most simplistic point, but an impression is an eyeball, right? Like something that you posted came across someone's eyeball at some point in their experience on social media. And those are, that's kind of across the board with these platforms. Like an impression is kind of the same thing, you know, engagement is pretty much what it sounds like. You know, someone engaged, whether that was a like a share, a comment, a double tap, yeah, whatever. Liking so, a comment. So that's kind of um, the two big terms that are constantly. And then another set one is reach. This. Let's. Uh, what is reach? Define that for the listeners. Um. So that is, I, I think I look at reach as more of like. It's kind of an impression, but it's like the total amount of what's possible. Yes. Yeah. So for me, and this is just my definition, reach is what is obtainable out there. Yeah, so, so reach is interesting. So let's use Facebook um, as an example, right? So instructor Earl is sitting at um, 1.5 million follow or 1.5 million views. And then we got to talk about a view because different platforms define a view a different way. Uh, and usually it was like, you know, it was 10 seconds. But it was originally it was 15. So right. it went from 15 to 10. It was. Yeah, it was originally that. And then, sorry, I'm just looking up some stats yeah, real So quick. originally it was 15, and then it went to 10. They also have a new uh, mechanism that shows you the number of three-second views. Right, right. So specifically, let's we're going to look at um, the latest video, The It's Who We Are With, uh, that we just posted with Crispy. So um, I'm looking at the numbers here. Um, we're looking at... Uh, just under 900,000 people reached, right? So that's that's people that uh, had this video show up across their feed. Right. Of that, just under 900,000, uh, it's got 350,000 views right now. So basically... Um, Hold on, so no, the video itself has... 350,000 views. Oh, so oh, we're, I thought you were talking about the... Yeah, uh, ju just just getting between the reach, a reach versus a view. So a reach is kind of the same as an impression. When I think of reach in terms of Instagram, it's how many accounts did you reach? Right. That's how they define reach. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's more uh, people that had you come across them. Right. And then impressions is the total so, encompassing so number. the way that... As a let's say I'm gonna talk as a lay person, or someone that doesn't do what you and I do for a living. Um, what that means is the reach was I'm gonna round up for the sake of conversation nine hundred thousand. Yep. Of that nine hundred thousand, we'll say four hundred thousand watched it. So what that tells you is that nine hundred thousand people had the opportunity to click on this or what, hover or hover. And then from that, you can say, okay, well, we basically reached just under half of those people. What could we have done differently to really capture 100% of the eyeballs? You know what I mean? So you can look at it many, many different ways. And right now we're kind of talking about Facebook. For me, that says this was your opportunity and this was the opportunity you captured. Uh, I don't know what the industry average is. I'm sure it's probably 10% at best, you know, if, if that. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, so, um, just for those listening, that that that's a that's a hammer. Like that crushes. Like, yeah, yeah. That's when when we get. If I get, um, twenty percent view to impression capture to reach you. Yeah, like I'm happy with that. The crispy videos 
sitting quite a bit higher than that. I'm right. really happy with that. Yeah. Because it means that when our stuff shows up on their feed, they're stopping. Right. And that's ultimately the most important thing. Right. Yeah. Ooh, these guys are putting out good stuff. Yep, I'm yep. see what's going and on. And that's just what, you know, we've we've always done that well. We just want to continue to do yeah. that well and then kind of, you know, and hopefully then, like, spread It's an inexact science. I mean, it really is. It's like, like what? It's an inexact science. Like, you can honestly think you have it dialed. And, like, you and I talked about this last night. Like, I, I on Kimber's Instagram, for example, I have photos that I've been like, oh, my God, dude, this is money. This thing's going to kill it. This photo is going to crush. And you put it up on a Thursday primetime, and it performs – it's your worst post of two weeks, you know? And then you have something that's like, oh, crap, I forgot to post this. I need to throw something up. I'm throwing something. I, I, this happened to me uh, last Sunday, no, Sunday before last. I threw something up at an off-peak hour, and I didn't, you know, I was like, oh, just I needed to get this thing up, but I'm four hours behind schedule. Top performing post of the month, most, second most comments of the year. I didn't expect that. Yeah. But like two days before, or three days before on Thursday, I was like, oh, this is going to hammer, you know? And then, and, and you don't know what's going on in people's lives. You don't know what's going on in the country. Correct. Are there other events? Are there other distractions? You know, like there's just so, it's just an, and, and a lot of people, you know, uh, would look at something like that and just like kind of like throw their hat up in the air, throw their hands in the air and get pissed. But it's like, I like it, man, because it keeps me on my toes. And it's like, you're constantly ch- trying to figure out ways to work within the system that they, that, that complaining about it, saying, oh, this is bullshit, my First Amendment rights. That's not going to do a damn thing for anybody, man. Yeah. So you well, constantly it, have to try and stay ahead of the curve. It comes full circle back to what the sort of the staple in which I abide by when I think about my job, which is adapt every day. Like yeah. Never, ever rest on your laurels because that's when you're going to get stale. That's when your engagement's going to start to go down. Like you really have to try and do new things all the time and then really, uh, define who you are right and, and one other thing new things are not instantaneously accepted they're not and what i mean by that is so let's say you know i, I think black rifle i've been around black rifle for years now and the humor based stuff humor 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 like everyone loved that stuff everybody loves to laugh and then as the company grew and the brand grew it was and and there was an education component that needed to take place, like other than hey, it's just coffee. No, I mean it's like it's time to educate people on what coffee is and all the equipment and gear, brewing processes that you guys use. You have to teach people about them because like I look at that and it's like man, you hear me when I walk in, it's like man, isn't there just like some like push button pot? So you it, and you, you you put up your first instructional video, yeah. and you know it's not going to blow up. Yeah, but you have to stay with it. Yeah. And you have to, it's like, a, it's, hey, we still got the funny humor guys here, but hey, we want you to come along this journey with us, so we're going to educate you because we want you to know and love coffee the way we do. Yeah, and it directly relates back to the pillars of Black Rifle. Provide a good quality product, entertain, and inform. Like, those, that's us. It doesn't need to be over complicated. Like, that's who we are. And, like, you've been staying with me uh, these last couple of days in Texas, and you watch me make coffee in my About to be your roommate. And we'll see. Come on now. <laughs> You watch me make coffee in my Chemex, and you're like, this is so dumb. Like, what are you doing? This is way too complicated. Where's the push button thing? And then you try the coffee, and you're like, oh, oh, oh okay. All right, so so what you're doing is worth it, even though it takes a little bit more time. Why is that? But, right? But, it, like, there's this question that arrives, and, like, we need to answer those questions. Why do I need to go down this rabbit hole? What do I get out of it? No, it's interesting. Like, I've always said, like, the... Massive amount of time I've spent with you guys. Um, I'm a, I'm two, I'm five foot ten. I'm 240 pounds. I'm from Georgia. I'm a knuckle dragon meathead redneck. I don't have a sophisticated palate, you know. Like, um, I like to think that intellectually I'm sophisticated, but you know, I just kind of cruise through life knocking shit over. I'm just a dumb grunt. I just, hey, I, I'm jealous. And um, you, you don't ever know what you don't know. And I remember it's we a were very s- good statement. We, yeah, it's based on common sense. Uh, I got a lot of good statements. But um, Evan made a comment to me one time about like a K-cup. He's like, oh, this is a K-cup coffee. You can, take the, you can taste the plastic. And I was like, fucking hey, man, you're right. Damn it. So now every time I have a K-cup, Keurig, I taste the plastic. It drives me crazy. Because I, I was a guy that would drink you know, three, four cups of coffee in the morning. And now, 
like the way that you make it and the way Evan makes it, it's a higher quality brew. It's a higher quality product. I don't find myself drinking as much because I'm getting a better cup of coffee, you know? Yeah, yeah. Really interesting thing I'm digging into right now. Another beauty of social media is how quickly we can get and spread information, really quality information. Um, I'm still digging into it, but I'm going to throw this up on the Black Rifle story later today. Is uh, The uh, U.S. Army actually just did a study uh, linking caffeine consumption timing and amount to productivity and attention towards doing certain tasks. And what they found is that there's not really a the more caffeine that you drink doesn't necessarily mean more energy and more like you can actually consume a very specific amount of caffeine at a certain time. And that, uh, is kind of your sweet spot. Right. And, and that that's, uh, so you can over consume caffeine obviously. Um, but caffeine does help like 100%. There's no argument about that. It's that, like fish oil. Like, I mean, well, I would say caffeine, fish oil, creatine. Whey protein, high, highly ref- like, are those are like the real things that are out there. So this is a sidebar. Like I, uh, um, I compete in powerlifting. I'm you know, pretty strong guy, and one of my really good friends, John Welburn, um, you know, talking about pre workout supplements and stuff. There is no better pre workout for all these people listening that are buying all the pre workout powders with seventy three hundred different ingredients that you don't even know how to pronounce, much less understand. The one component to all pre workout is anhydrous caffeine. That's all that matters. It's the caffeine content in the pre workout. That's all it is. All that other shit, the, you know, branch chain amino acids. What, what makes you all tingly? Uh, beta alanine. Yeah. That's a ride, brother. Yeah, that's a ride. Yeah, it is. If you don't have that, if you don't take pre workout for a little but while, I don't, I don't, and then I, you I, have it again, you're like, oh. No, but I, I, when, I, when I take it, I take beta alanine just in, the, in pill form. Yeah. Just because it's fun. It feels fun. <laughs> that, I mean, that's the only reason. But like, honest God, you could take, f- for those of you that work out, exercise, honest, I'll challenge you to try for once, take two shots of espresso, scoop away protein, scoop of amino acids, put it in a shaker bottle, and try that for 30 days as a pre-workout. It's much cleaner. It's much more efficient. It's much more effective. than, And that is something that is information that can be, that's out on the internet, you know, and that's how you can find it. Yeah, yeah, and th- and that's something I want to dig into a little bit deeper. Uh, and we've got a couple of videos in the works, but um, just getting into the science. Like we've been, um, if you go through our YouTube, we've been very instructionally minded um, over the summer, uh, coming out of uh, Q two and Q three, um, just trying to get knowledge out there, and uh, <clears throat> that will shift over towards more of like a why coffee. Like mm-hmm. we want to answer the why coffee question in, oh, I dig that. That's in, cool. in a multitude of different ways because especially the deeper I get into the weeds on coffee um, there's nothing really bad about it it's actually the more information that's coming out is uh, how good it is Yeah, a- and we're finding out new stuff so it's really interesting it's really fun and then to come up with fun interesting ways to portray that information to our audience is you know, it's part of your life every single day. Right. If you drink coffee, you probably drink it every single day, at least once a day. Yeah. Um, it's also interesting. It's it's like, uh, you know, to someone that, you know, like, like we say, like it's not into the social world the way we are, like creating it and providing it. Like there's it, there's an art, man, and I've never thought about this till you just said that a second ago. There is a very fine art, and you may not realize this, how to make education entertaining. To where it, Infotainment, we call it. What is it? Infotainment. Infotainment. Yep. Do I have a trademark on that? Uh, no. Should we? Let me text we Christine to go ahead and have her file yeah, that yeah, for yeah. me right now. Um, but no, it's like you know, you know, you you taught me when we first started out. You know, like consumable, dig- easily digestible, shareable content is king. Yeah, yeah. So um, one one thing that <clears throat> one of the major sources of inspiration for me coming into this whole business, um, starting to get into YouTube, was uh, there's this content creator. Uh, his name's Casey Neistat. And he was kind of the pioneer of this run and gun, handheld, don't really give a shit type of content. Um, and and I've adopted a lot of like I, I think the original AeroPress video that I did with the overhead camera rig was dumping the thing out, making it as quick as possible, beat it to some music like that. That video was not interesting outside of 
the cuts and the beats to it and pairing it with this music. Like I'm making a cup of coffee. It's not that interesting. Um, but the video to like within a, you know, a little, a short period of time, like it had 80,000 views. Like that's, you know, the YouTube channel at that time was like, I don't know, 20,000 subscribers maybe. So like hitting 800% of your audience, like that's a win, man. I had a video. I had two videos on a uh, Kimber in one month. Uh, one was a uh, amethyst, which is a, a, one of the 1911s, and the other one was a sapphire. And uh, I mean, like you know, scout sniper over here, you would look at me like, oh man, that's a girly gun. You know, it's blue, it's sapphire. It's a beautiful gun aesthetically. And uh, the amethyst is purple lavender. Yeah, know? I remember this one. It ended up getting a couple it's million a, views. Couple, dude. Uh, six. And, and how half. simple was it? It was shot on an iPhone. It was literally a person holding a gun in their hand and flipping it over and kind of showing the gun. Yep. Holding the phone with one hand, holding the gun with the other. Six and a half million views on the other, on one and four and a half. And I did that. Those were both like within like one happened one week, the other happened the following week. And I was just like. Whoa, but you, but what's interesting is like I can put, and, and we gained on the Kimber Facebook page we gained forty three thousand followers that month. We, uh, dude, I, whoa, you know I caught lightning in a bottle. Yeah, so I mean, you know, like, just hold on that yeah. forty three thousand new followers, new like, Facebook followers. That no, actually, no, dude, that's hold on, that's not wrong. That's low. It was fifty nine thousand new followers in a forty five day period because those videos kept running and running and running. Right, they still get interaction, and, and that's something about. Uh, Facebook's algorithm uh, isn't so uh, flash in the pan anymore. It does your content does have a, a little bit longer. Le- uh, yeah, which legs. because it's like the video views on like the the you know like Instructor Earl, like we talked that morning and I was like, wow, man, it's been up two hours and it's done a couple hundred thousand views. Like I thought it would be at you know eight hundred thousand, and then I was like, wait a minute, hold on, it's a little different now. It, it runs, give it twenty four hours, you know. Yeah, it, and it's really nice as we're moving forward to have. Uh, past examples where we've had great success and then be able to like we we always play the prediction game um and i remember the night before uh we were all out at dinner and matt and i was you know let's guess how many this is gonna get um and matt won that one i thought instructor earl was gonna get a lot the facebook algorithm changed at the beginning of this year and it's kind of gone through a couple different iterations but um the the potential for a video to go viral is super low now right. compared to what it used to be in the past and he said he would he thought it would do like three and, and that's probably what it'll do over the next little while here but you know going back to the christmas carol facebook video uh i think he predicted that one at five i predicted 10 to 12 million and it ended up getting 38 million so like it's still know, a shoot sh- shit show, man. Like, and, and that's what kind of makes this fun, and and that's why you have to try new stuff, and and you have to think long term. Like, you can't like for people that are like you know starting a business or whatever, and social media, man, it doesn't happen overnight. Like, it is a it's not a grind. That's a negative connotation, but social media, like building and running platforms, it takes time. Like, you know, like go ahead and set aside and in, in just a year minimum to see if you can gain traction because it takes time. And it can change, dude, in a in a flash of a pan. Like you could be nothing, and then the next day you're everything. You just got You just can't walk away. You just have to keep putting out content, seeing what your audience likes, and continue to refine and improve what you're doing and get better. And you can't do the same thing over and over and over because people, it just becomes repetitive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why I got to run because we're going to yeah, yeah, have I a little here. content ideation session on the follow-up. Yeah. So for those stuff. of you listening, um, this was the first of hopefully. Uh, several more of these uh, types of uh, with the new launch code co-host Baker Levitt. Yeah, oh, I'll probably be jumping on these quite a bit more too. Yeah, but I think you know, I think this one we just kind of chatted, and I think that you know we can do another one and kind of dig down into the individual platforms, talk more about Facebook. Something that you know you do that I don't do is you build and make videos and stuff. That's not my, it's not my bag. But it would be interesting to sit down and talk like what goes into Instructor Earl. How did that happen? Because as a consumer. It's like, oh man, it looks like they just like got up a, you know, a, a no, camera I would love to and, talk about that. and I think it's they important. got a camera and told some jokes, man, and did some funny stuff and done. But what doesn't go into consideration is how long it took to film, how many iterations, writing the script, and then post production, which no one understands that's not in the space. And that's where that's where the work takes place, right? The post production. Yeah, absolutely. You can count on it to be at least. It'd take you three times. Three X is generally the, the method that I go. So, like, you know, 
when I'm getting quotes from video creators, generally their edit times are going to be about three times as much as. Yeah. And you film. get what you pay for in that space. Absolutely. All right, folks. I'm Baker Levitt. This is Logan Stark. And thank you for listening to Launch Code. <laughs>